नमस्कार वेलकम टू आवर स्पेशल सीरीज ऑफ गोल्डन सिग्नेचर्स टुडे वी हैव विद अस अ वेरी प्रोमिनेंट पर्सनालिटी ऑफ एकेडमिक सेक्टर प्रोफेसर रमेश के गोयल हु इज वाइस चांसलर ऑफ डेली फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंस एंड रिसर्च यूनिवर्सिटी एंड दिस इज द सेकंड टर्म फॉर प्रोफेसर गोयल हु हैज गॉट दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू हेड दिस ग्रेट इंस्टीट्यूशन my first question to you would be being the vice chancellor of dpsru which is the premier institution of uh, pharmacy in our country and perhaps second or third in the world also yes. and it has a long legacy since 64 to now it has been developed so how do you summarize and how do you see the legacy of this uh, great institution okay as per this is a pharmacy institution so in 1948 the pharmacy council of india was formed and the purpose of pharmacy council of india was to see that the practice of pharmacy is regulated yeah. with the by the qualified people in those days there used to be chemists and based on the experiences the licenses were given however like the polytechnic of delhi uh, it started here as the diploma course in pharmacy okay likewise of course before that the first was in 1932 at banaras hindu university okay. followed by madras medical college okay. followed by the punjab university and sagar we are the first university in india and third in the world as far as the pharmacy university is concerned and from merely two pg course uh, one ug one diploma and few pg courses we have around 30 courses now full fledged courses yes that so is so it has a long legacy i can see and i will come back to discuss about the dp rsu's uh, other activities and achievements but before that let me introduce my co-host and anchor professor no. dr uh, josna pandit also now i would like to ask a separate question which relates directly to you because you have a long long you know experience in this field so of 43 years of academic i will have to read including 25 years as professor served as phd guide in eight universities guided 182 maybe more than that m pharma and 44 phd students over 700 publications 19 books 32 book chapter and 76 awards in research at a state national and international level so it has a you know full of achievements you have also been a distinguished visiting professor in uh, malaysia and russia and from a professor in ahmedabad you become vice chancellor to a prestigious university of baroda ms university and now you are second term serving this how do you look back your own journey and uh, how do you summarize that okay now in sixth standard i was of course stopper i didn't know even that because i was a child but today when i saw that building a couple of years ago i decided to do something and in that area i have with my donation and one round table uh, uh, ngo we have built a new school so i feel fortunate that whatever i got in the education i am trying to pay back to the society the school central school baroda by virtue of becoming vice chancellor at msu i became chairman of that school wonderful so this is another i don't know how much god has blessed me and then the i got ug and pg degrees from ms university of baroda and i went there as the vice chancellor i think god cannot be more kind than this like this so if i see that way journey it was wonderful so you have filed eight patents also out of these eight three have been awarded so may you would like to ask any question if okay. you okay so please tell us in brief about your eight patents eight patents okay you filed eight patents and three have been awarded okay three and now fourth is also almost in the state of being awarded the pct will be awarded so on what that. particular okay see i started the patent uh, filing with the herbal drug formulation okay there was one anti diabetic drug for which we filed the patent mm-hmm. normally what happens many time is scientist work with the 10 15 or 100 of plants here i have worked with few plants but taken up to the end reaching to the molecular level mm-hmm. so that formulation patent and isolating the active compound was the first patent which i got although it did not uh, fetch the tech transfer 
but yes as an academic i felt it is a good i got some patent later on with the ginger so that was another patient with the ginger again isolated the compound okay and that gingerol was the compound isolated and gingerol is again i could correlate molecular mechanism mm. i was happy when i saw in australia somebody has taken that as a lead paper and tried to work further mm-hmm. then was the patent on the like what happens our insulin is bind with the zinc in the body zinc insulin when i was a postdoc fellow in vancouver canada mm-hmm. we worked on chromium and it was something like that insulin substitute will be probably the vanadium at that time mm-hmm. but vanadium is a very toxic element mm-hmm. it cannot be used trace element yes. so we found chromium and that chromium we could club it i mean we could tag it with the insulin and it was a formulation so that formulation development again we got the another patent for that now although this chromium insulin has not been taken up by industry mm-hmm. but i was really elated in 2003 when one us company called me that we want you to make a presentation on the chromium okay itself okay. because they feel that chromium is a important element and your results are very much matching to us wonderful so this way the passion continues and currently i will say more on the herbal side having some patents so that. i would like to ask a supplementary question about the diabetic things you said yes has that been uh, in commercialized has that see the company which supported for that formulation mm-hmm. they used to say that previously they were hardly selling 1 kg per month and now they reached to 100 or 10 also after that they were also part of that patent but yes you cannot say i mean now the patent means you should go in the millions so or something that would be the part of the prime minister's jan aushadhi something if you yeah in the ayush that. program in for ayush sure program. yes a uh, prime minister i feel even in 2008 he gave me the task of choice based credit system mm-hmm. and a sort of a education policy for government of gujarat based on which knowledge consortium of gujarat was also formed and all that i was part of it at that time yes and he i could see his passion mm. but probably i got entangled in my msu problems that i could not okay. really deliver what he was looking for it but i am happy that based on that the new policy has come now similarly ayush there are certain problems of ayush also So we cannot be simple traditional mm-hmm. it has to be correlated with the uh, modern medicine i used to tell to the public that this is to standardize mm-hmm. this marker compounds are to standardize and that's how in those days 2002 if you see my research project submitted and sanctioned by dst mm-hmm. activity guided fractionation mm-hmm. and uh, bioassay guided and that terminology i am seeing when i am the member of the dst committee practically every project has that word <laughs> so although it is a hidden thing but it was a truth and it can be this so is very much relevant this is relevant yes. so ayush if we want to take to so next I level think, this I is think, required i think dpa rsu should officially write a letter to the ministry and the government prime minister about this that they should be incorporated in ayus if that is done because you are heading a great uh, uh, pharmaceutical university well ayush has started doing many things now okay. in in this line also we are not officially part of it but we have signed mou with all india institute of ayurveda okay and uh, together we are in the I mean, last 6 months only we are now discussing how to take it further although we got one good drug for covid so what have been your institution's major achievements so far okay see that way it is only 6 years right yes. now uh, now after oh, becoming university uh, becoming university and my and you were the founder the vice chancellor no, as i am uh, yeah i cannot say founder there was a uh, uh, interim vice chancellor also okay. professor s s agrawal and i am the next regular one. no regular i am the first one okay as the so that way i can be called as the first vice chancellor regular vice chancellor well 
leave aside that part, but the important part is in this five years, the first thing was to have the, I mean, initiated the measures mm. which will give a sound foundation. So that included first to come out with the proper statues and ordinances, mm -hmm. which will give support to any investigator. This was one thing. Then appointing the faculties, that was another thing. Now we have 14 full professors, professor level, and total 50 regular faculty now. So now research need good infrastructure and centers of excellence. So we got one the Center for Formulation Development, DSIR sponsored grant recently, which has been there, and we are expected to support 100 MSMEs, which we will do. Second was the, with the help of the Delhi government, uh, uh, DKDF, the knowledge consortium they have got, they funded it for the precision medicine center. So pharmacy is not simply chemicals, mm -hmm. biotechnology, genomic, that also remains the part of it. So, to promote that and no drug, new drug discovery is possible without solid biotechnology and pharmaco, the, the latest technology involved. Incubation and innovation, the startups. So, we got with the help of DBT, Department of Biotechnology, a grant. Hmm. The incubation foundation we had initially, but we had support of the bio incubator center also. We could have 16 startups. And uh, normally it is expected 5 to 10 percent success, but our success rate was very high. Six almost startup exited with some output. I need something like uh, when there is anything related to medical. Yes. Everybody rushes to All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. That's true. My dream is, I will say, I will be satisfied if similar situation comes for DPSRU. Mm -hmm. that for any pharmacy solution, mm -hmm. DPSRU is looked first. So the mission of DPSRU also includes catering to the health needs of the people at large. Yes. So I would like to ask you what was your institution's role during COVID-19? Okay. See, uh, COVID, during COVID-19, most of the places, the development of, I mean, giving the services to the public, in different way like awareness programs, mask develop. We started preparing the sanitizers. Some mm -hmm. of our startup did that. Innovative mask also. Although that mask were developed even one year before the COVID came. I see. It was for the pollution. Mm -hmm. So that could be utilized. That's very important. Uh, you saying <laughs> you had developed the mask yes. one year before the before COVID. that. But to me, the biggest achievement was hmm. to come out with a drug. So we were not rushing up, although after one and a half years have passed, but hmm. we are still not doing it because we want a proper approval of the clinical trial which we did. Hmm. But the unique part is that this virus, it is a RNA virus. Hmm. Being the RNA, RNA virus, it is going to mutate, hmm. understood. But the target which it hit, that is the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, AC2, is important. Mm. I have been involved in this research for last 35 years before this. Mm -hmm. This renin angiotensin system itself, which was in 1940s for kidney electrolyte balance, mm. 60s it was considered for blood pressure, mm. 80s, 90s it became cardiomyopathy, and by turn of century, it was retinopathy also. Great. AC2 was discovered in 2002. Mm. And till COVID came, role was not clear, but something regulatory. Now a virus, when it attacks such a system, which involved all this entire body. Mm. And on the top of this, we found that there's something is happening in the brain. Something is happening in the lungs. lungs. Mm. Nobody knew before that. Mm. Now, because of COVID, I am seeing it is unraveled. Mm. And nature is great. They provided a drug we, we got from Aravali Biodiversity. Mm. And we got the drug first time 
in the world like this that which is, is that directly ac2 only rather than anything else it's effective it's it is effective to us not only that to the post covid complications also and many more things so which has it there. been sent to the market as well see because of the ayush approval we are not marketing that's in a, that way that's pretty that you have uh, developed you are a premier institution you have developed a proven certified uh, uh, medicine and which is not in the market so see, what is the use no, of no, that no no market means as a food supplement for other purpose it has been used but for the covid if we, if we use we have to abide by the rules hmm. so the your covid related research on the drugs and various formulation is still going on yes we have tied up with the university of missouri it is not simply that we did hair experiment something it hmm. was in the university of missouri they found and missouri they were blinded in the united states in united states okay and they were not they were not knowing even that what we have given for testing hmm. and it was proved correct Wonderful. that is something but as it is said generally that content is king when you are running a university the knowledge which you are disseminating that oh, is what yes. is most important yes, yes so yes. if we we think about how you are going to make it a world class university what kind of steps you are uh, taking or planning to take in the future well world class university has several other parameters see first thing is the very age of the university matters in that also okay <laughs> see oxford if you compare that world top ranking university they have been pretty old this is one part mm -hmm. but that is not uh, i mean you cannot say that a new un university cannot become the world class mm -hmm. the there are few parameters which are very strict number one is the like if you say one parameter is the infrastructure itself Mm. budget itself third is the faculty and fourth is research this like faculty and research research environment research funding mm. i will say indian government has been doing no quite a good I, i don't find because in our time when it was when we were doing research that much funding was not there as compared to now today Thanks that is the, for sure thanks to modi government no it is like yeah definitely modi government he he the important the part is the accountability well. what they give okay. that is very important about the modi sir i always like accountability mm. but i must thank even our abdul kalam for that first president who brought the revolution real revolution changes started from him mm. when he was the president he introduced various programs like uh, inspire fellowships and all that a boost to the research uh, i think first i will have to give the credit to him for this research part and definitely it is there it is increasing but what has happened is to me the challenge of faculty okay. to real on one side is, is there any shortcut is there any way to come out of this challenge i i don't know many time i used to debate myself say okay some it is easy to say that oh we are not being allowed to recruit and why there are but you at the take them on ad hoc basis or maybe see uh, that is what is there so at least if vice chancellors are given some percentage of freedom for that like okay 5% faculty or 10% faculty will be at your nothing disposal. at your disposal and they will be tenure based let it not be a permanent also mm -hmm. to me this appears to be one of the solutions to it because it is difficult at times mm -hmm. see the rules regulations are framed by and education is heavily regulated in india if i consider my so has this problem not been solved in the new education policy the, the new framework the, the very regulations are coming the proposal to have only one regulatory agency itself is a good thing yeah. otherwise if i say here i am regulated by ugc pci aict if it is other councils so all these <laughs> things this is one thing yeah. then councils should not dictate okay. see they should give the guideline they should not say that no you cannot have plus minus 5% also that is wrong they are trying to give this should be the exam scheme no i am not agreeing then what is the fun of having the university autonomy where is the autonomy 
when you want to dictate that how much percentage and what should be the internal marks and what should be external marks this is very bad in the professional education hmm. university should be given that freedom i'll come back to the nep question because hmm. we have a couple yeah. of questions the next question would yeah. be so we have lost almost two years because of this covid 19 hmm. there was you know from the students to educational institute every fraternity yes. has been shattered so how we can uh, overcome this now? How this okay. can be covered? See, everything, it brings opportunity also. Mm. When I was involved in the framing that uh, in the Gujarat model, we proposed few things that there should be multidisciplinary approach, cafeteria approach for selecting of the subject. Now that was something that, okay, if I am the student of, uh, let us say, science, I want to learn philosophy how it will be done. Mm. It was not possible. So, transdisciplinary approaches. Now, with the NEP, this is one of the key features. If I, somebody asks me what is the real good feature, the multidisciplinary approach, multi-exit system, mm. core electives, open electives, that is there. Mm. You cannot teach how to treat a patient online. Mm. So, professional education has suffered a lot, including pharmacy also. Certain experiments wherein the practicals are required, by and large every state has been instructed not to bypass, not to give, I mean get away with the examination. Mm. But still, there was online teaching but two years gap which has occurred, how to bridge that, it is a big challenge. That is a big question. It is a big challenge. Overall, what is your comment about the NEP and its uh, implementation challenges so when we are is this nep is definitely going to make the difference in that mm. attention to school is equally important mm. but see there is something like higher education and we say school education i would like to summarize do you think the nep uh, is solving all these challenges there is Overall, a, how do you see there is a suggestion there is definitely it is going to happen but still, do you find there is challenge in implementation? See, challenges will be there. Anything new means it's a challenge. And how we can overcome these challenges? Any suggestion? Would the suggestions are that uh, the awareness among the teachers is the first thing. That yes, what is the real advantage? The mass awareness. Mass awareness to the teachers, to the stakeholders, all. All is That what is the advantage of this? Hmm. That is what is important to me. I mean, it has to be done. So, this is very unique uh, and very, uh, you know, useful idea. If we talk about your university, how NEP you are going to implement or implementing in, uh, what is the way of your implementation? See, our university is a professional university. Mm -hmm. So, and as I told you, we are regulated by PCI, Pharmacy Council of India, through that uh, the like it is a physiotherapy, it is a physiotherapy council. Mm -hmm. So we will influence the councils that please incorporate these changes. Now the changes have also come. Elective, the concept of electives have come. We have also given extra credit as per the based on this NEP mm -hmm. that extra credit. So mm -hmm. credit transfer, very good point in this NEP. So, that way we are definitely going to do it. Now, we started B farm in Ayurveda. So, one of the motive is ethics and values which we are talking about. In, and there is a science hidden in the all ways or Puran and like that. Very true. Mm. That has to come out. And to me, I mean, I try to convey this message that why in schools, in each textbook, from third standard or fourth standard, mm. include one chapter, I am not asking a book or so, mm. one chapter related to science in each standard. Mm. Let the student realize that Sanskrit does not mean chanting and the or something like uh, rituals. Mm. It is beyond that, it is a science. And when we are talking about the pharmacy and you know, all kinds of health related medical, yes. whether it's Ayurveda, it's homeopathy or Yunani or the, or the English medicine, whatever. So, if that is taught in one campus, one, so the students who are studying Ayurveda, they can go and take the classes of the MBBS also. Yes. Let them understand what they're teaching mm. so that they can 
give the better solution. Similarly, whosoever is attending the MBBA classes, he can come and mm. see how these Ayurveda people are treating the same, you know, yeah. disease. So then it will be a different, uh, you know. But in that case, those councils should not say that how Ayush is coming in our picture when we are a modern medicine or modern medicine should not, uh, the, those Ayush people should not say how come you are coming here? They're not going to They're like it. I was told, why you are isolating a compound? If you are isolating a compound, that means it is not Ayurved. Mm. <laughs> that is wrong. Sir, how do you see the future of medical and pharma education domain in 2022 and beyond the post-COVID okay. situation? COVID-19 <laughs> has in fact changed the in, many things in the world. <laughs> and especially the pharmaceutical has become a core you know, area, which everybody is, is looking at the health, they have become every family, every individual has become health conscious. So naturally, the re related education will be... Yes. How see, do you see so, the Okay, so first thing is that this COVID has definitely brought a good changes with in terms of hygiene, cleanliness that is there. Mm -hmm. Now, with respect to the education part also, the pharma... And the industry also, I think you mean to say yes. how the Overall. medical uh, or industry or the uh, medical device industry. industry will go. I think we have a bright future now because uh, in the COVID time, it was very clear that the practice of medicine with respect to like uh, diseases, there was a time that people used to consider the, especially the developed countries, Europe and the, who cares about the communicable diseases. They were more concentrating on the non-communicable, diabetes, cardiac, cancer. Now their mindset has changed. No, they have to pay equal attention to communicable diseases. This is the big thing which has come. I am still curious. What are the regulations required for starting a hospital? Mm -hmm. And compare it, what are the requirements when you have to start a pharma industry? Mm -hmm. In pharma industry, lakhs of capsules or bottles are there, prepared sometimes capsules within a day also. Even liquids or sep aseptic injections hardly you will find that they are non-sterilized. Mm. They are infected also. Mm. All the care. Mm. Whereas in medical, if surgery has to be done, patient has to start with antibiotics before surgery. Mm. That means they are confident that he is going to get infection otherwise. Mm. It's a big change. Mm -hmm. So, that itself speaks that how many cares are taken. And are they really there? Okay. During COVID period, oxygen problem which came. Yes. So it was not a COVID situation only. Mm. The hospitals were not that well equipped. If you say 10, is there any regulatory agency which checks that you have 10 ventilators also? Or at least minimum requirement? I am still curious to know. I may be wrong also. COVID has definitely taught now. So what is your suggestion for the government overall? Uh, what changes they should make, what policy they can bring, what what uh, allocation they, can, they should make for the health yeah. infrastructure. No, the, so the increasing number of hospitals, that is all right, like those which are funded by government or those are the government hospitals. They never thought all these things at that time. The government and has now, already decided now they have one thing. They are converting the district hospitals into PPP mod into the a private. Uh, it's, it's a good move, but ensure that these things are not repeated, <laughs> like loss of uh, I mean no ventilator or no short supply of oxygen and all that. They should be adequate. We are almost uh, at the end of our interview today. I have a different question. Uh, we have seen many reports and news uh, articles about the uh, an issue which is going on in the southern states about the hijab in the campus, whether they should wear hijab or not, a Muslim uh, should be. So, what is your thought on that? See, our country is a non... I mean, the, we respect all religion. Mm -hmm. So, under those circumstances, 
it's not good to give the calls like that that don't wear hijab or don't wear this 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 is my personal feeling that this is not a practical yes and this is this should not be the prerogative of any particular educational institution to yes. impose such things. yes it, it i mean one should not do that so we have seen end, that i mean if you have any other suggestion if you have any other thing which you want to say which is not covered in our interview uh i think practically you have covered everything let me tell you you started from all the things but my still feeling is that uh the last thing which i because there you are we are talking about the covid and loss that two years loss there has to be some bridge courses or bridge modules to be uh developed by each institution wherein they feel that this in this two years for example from first mbbs to third mbbs they have come for example or after one year so there is a gap of one year mm. there must have been some limitation for that medical student that he could not be taught certain aspect properly mm. maybe some practical so you need not to impose that all practicals have to be done no at least some practicals he has to take as the additional course which were lost like that like in our pharmacy also like some students we have something like formulation so viscosity and all the we have the physical pharmacy in first year now those first year student probably have not properly been exposed to that in the practical mm. and they have come to third year now when they are going to learn so to revive that develop those modules so that that gap is lost this can be the easiest way to recover that loss mm -hmm. this is what so one should not take it for granted like what you have taught uh, it is taken for granted forget okay no try to revive that but that will be thank you very much thank you very much for giving so much of time to our indian observer post and uh, we will meet next time with a new personality in our series of golden signatures till then thank you so much namaskar namaskar <laughs>